Sunday service at Unity Church of San Marcos today. My soul is welcome here, and we're in our right place. Sometimes it's rather hard, isn't it? You know, Daniel Naima, I wrote that song, and it's a beautiful song, and it really reflects all of the truth that we would like to embody sometimes, right? Exactly. And experience as well. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we're in the fifth week of a six-week series about Lessons of the Turtle, uh, Living Right Side Up from Steve Goodyear. And many of us are going through the experiences of COVID-19 at this time and all of the social distancing and, and our lives just really don't feel like we're living them right side up. We feel like we're upside down, which is exactly where Turtle is right now. Turtle is like upside down and, and not only exasperated, but he's like had enough. I mean, seriously, and he's, he's talking to this owl who is, you know, having a conversation and is trying to befriend him and help him learn some of the lessons while one is upside down. And, uh, but he is just like, owl, I am literally living my life upside down. Help me to get my life right side up. Help me, please get back on my feet, right? And of course, Al is like, you know, I, I would if I could. And isn't that the way it seems sometimes? Is where we've got people in our lives, and you think, oh, if I just had, you know, or organizations or systems or whatever, if only they would, then I could get back on my feet, right? And so Al is like, well, I can't do that. But just be patient, you know? We, ju we just have to be patient. And of course, at that moment, the last thing that Turtle has is patience, right? When we're, when, we're, when we're at the end of our rope, the last thing we really have is patience. And Turtle's response is, what do you mean, we? Do you see that um, anyone else lying here on their back, you know? And he's like, What's this we business? And that's kind of how we feel sometimes, you know? We're, we're, asking, we're being asked to stay in our homes. We're being asked not to connect and not to do all of our normal activities and, and all of the things that normally soothe us and, and help us to deal with everyday life circumstances and things like that that we have 
used are not available to us, right? Okay. Well, so Turtle says, well, as long as you're still stuck on your back, you might as well learn another gift and be ready. And so he's encouraging Turtle. Here, accept another gift because this is the one of the mountain. So the gift of the mountain is about goals, all right? And the author of the book, Steve Goodyear, he, he says this book's not about, this, this section's not about how to set goals. There's lots of people who wrote all about that. This is about taking the action for that goal and doing and doing what it takes to make that goal come into expression. So the gift of the mountain is the lesson of goals, where we, you and I, take small steps every day, focused on pursuing every day that goal, whatever it is that's right in front of us, that helps us to achieve that mountain. Now, of course, he's looked, Turtle has looked at this mountain. He's never seen a mountain before, like he hadn't seen the fullness of the tree. Now, so what is that mountain to us sometimes? Now, ultimately, that whole mountain represents more than the goals. What that mountain represents is a vision. It's a vision of something that compels us, that draws us, that makes us feel like there's something important that you and I have to be about, or that speaks to us, that asks us to, to come forward and, and draws to us. We happen to be celebrating the 4th of July weekend this weekend, which is our independence and freedom. And the reality is, is that freedom is not free, okay? It's just not. And so I'm reminded that freedom calls us to take action. It asks something of us. It's not something that we can just have at our whim that just comes to us freely. Freedom is a principle of life, but it requires something of us, as does a dream and a vision, an aspiration. It requires something of us. It requires us to take action on it. And so taking those small steps in order to achieve that, I am reminded of what the author said, he says about goals. What is important is that each of us knows where we want to go and that we take daily steps to get there. Just working toward a goal, advancing it a little every day is all that is needed. You think that might be kind of simple, right? Just a little something, okay, yeah, no, we see our goal, you know. But so many times we forget, don't we? Or we just get focused on life, or we just this or that. And so we have to keep that mountain focused, all right? In order to stay focused, we have to keep that mountain there. But we also have to focus more specifically on the terrain that's right in front of us in order to have an experience of that dream, of that mountain vision. And so his, his expression, Steve Goodyear's, is that it is important to focus more on the terrain rather than just the top. Because the terrain in front of us, the goal right in front of us, that's what's important. That is one of the means with which you and I can facilitate bringing those dreams, those visions, those aspirations that speak to our hearts and minds into expression. Now there's a, um, there is a, um, yeah, book called First Things First, First, First Things First. And the author is Stephen Covey. And he writes about Viktor Frankl, who was an Austrian psychologist, a survivor of the death camps of the Nazi Germany. 
And he made a startling discovery about why some people survived the horrendous conditions and some did not. Now you might think it's all about health or vitality or intelligence, survivor skills. And some of those things played a part. But what he discovered was the single most important thing was a compelling sense of future vision. A sense of something important that that person had to live for. A work or some dream or something important that that really made that individual feel that they had something that they still needed to live for. And this was true of survivors of POW camps in Vietnam and elsewhere, that, that there was this primary force, this heartfelt sense, a compelling future vision that kept many of them alive. How can you and I know when something is something we just kind of want and something is a dream, a vision that has been placed within our hearts and minds by spirit itself in order for us to live it, in order for you and I to experience that. Well, I can tell you the simplest way is that a dream or a vision won't let you go. Things that we want, it's, they're, they're transitory. They'll be there like, oh, you know, I'd really like a brand new car. Well, okay, and I'll think about it for a while. But I can tell you, the dream to become a minister was years before I was able to fulfill that. But it never left me alone. Never. There was, it was always under everything that I did, there was this sense of I wanted to be a minister. And I wanted to experience that and what it was and the fulfillment of that. And from the time I first got that vision, if you will, that sense of that understanding that I was meant to be a minister, it took seven years. Now that, many people would have probably given up. Many people might have. I was turned down several times saying, nope, nope, not, not, not now. I don't know about you, but a lot of us, we tend to think, oh, well, maybe I misunderstood. Maybe I got it all wrong. Maybe I'm really not meant to have this. Maybe I, you know, and so we, we create these doubts for ourselves, these false senses of, this is a sign. And it's, it's not about that. It's not about that at all. It's about, and this is, the the, the title of my message, I was made to climb. You and I were made to climb as, as beings of life. And I don't know how to express it any way other than we are offered these mountaintop visions because we're meant to climb them. They're meant for us. They're not meant for someone else, though someone else may have a similar vision or a similar heart calling, but when we receive them, and that is something that has been placed within you and I and our hearts, it's ours. It is ours to climb. It is ours to do. And when we are able to hold on to that sense and remember that not only has Spirit given me this, but I'm meant to have this. I'm meant to have experienced this. This is something I, am, I have been given through the power of God as a vision saying, come. Come here. Because my soul, my soul, knows that this is a great good that will feed me and feed my soul. So, I think one of the reasons spirit offers these dreams, these visions of the heart that compels us to experience it is that when the natural difficulties of life, and believe me, none of us could have said that 
the experiences of social distancing and wearing masks and having to be uh, anxious about COVID-19 are not difficult. They are difficult. So when these life difficulties come, we don't just quit. We don't just give up. We don't just say, you know, what's the use? Because inside of us, inside of us, down to the bone, if we allow it, down to the bone of our being, to the cells of our being, if we can understand that that's something still for us to do, there is something still for us to be about. When people retire, you know, men, women, when they retire from work, many of them think that their vision, their dream, whatever it was, is done and they have nothing left to live for. Many times this is on a soul level. I do believe that it's important for people to reconnect and to allow themselves to, once you've accomplished, say, one dream, that doesn't mean you won't have another. That doesn't mean that there won't be something else that'll come along. Maybe it's complimentary. Maybe it's something totally different. But it's important to recognize that spirit will always give us that which we need. And so if you and I are stuck in a perspective of just living on late days, busyness, the responsibilities that are taking over, trying to pay the bills, trying to feed our families or even ourselves sometimes, trying to have the sense of wherewithal that we can survive even sometimes. If we can remember our divine DNA and what is that, we'll come to that. So we're focusing on the terrain, we're staying the course. When Socrates was asked by a lost traveler how they can reach Mount Olympus, Socrates answered, just make every step you take go in that direction. Okay, so what is the next step? For you and I, it is focusing on the, the goal that's in front of us, that terrain, the goal that is right in front of us. Ted St. Martin is just a dairy farmer, but he had a unique distinction. He was and had never been a member of any basketball team, doesn't even play regularly, but he held a world record of being the most accurate shooter. In one day, he made 200 consecutive baskets from all different parts of the court. And on another day, he made 927 straight shots from the foul line. His secret. He doesn't look at the basket. He's not looking at the mountain. He's focusing on the spot of the back of the rim that he has to hit in order to get that goal. He's focusing on that one spot and that's what focusing on a goal is about, focusing on a terrain, is that while we may have an intention of the, of the fulfillment of our dream, of our vision, it's that goal, it's that one thing right in front of us, the terrain right in front of us, that has to be given action, that we have to take action on. And so he doesn't look at that goal. In order to move him towards the goal, he focuses only on that spot. And you and I can do the same thing. Instead of being overwhelmed by a big picture, I mean, a mountain's pretty big, right? Some of us have these lofty sense of dreams and visions of what we would like to achieve in our life. But instead of sensing that it's too big or whatever things happen in our lives that we can't do it, it's what can I do to take a step closer? What will it take and what is the very next step in order to achieve it? And one step at a time. David, would you share with us and lead us into For Us To Be, which is an original piece of his music. 
Yes, I would gladly do that. This is a song about sort of creating your own reality from within. It fits looking at goals. And these days we have to really go inside and see what's really going on to do that. So it's a song that's on my own. How many of you have ever headed in the direction of your dreams or your goals and hit your target immediately? Well, most of us meet roadblocks. So a part of living into our dreams and our fulfilling our, our mountaintop experience, so to speak, 
is expecting roadblocks. So many times I hear from people, you know, I was doing this and I was doing that, and if I was doing all that, how come I didn't just get it? Why didn't it just happen? Roadblocks. So I'm reminded of what it is that is inside you and I, that divine DNA I was talking about earlier. All right, let's address that. From Acts 3, 1 through 8, let me share this thought. Now, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a lame man from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at that gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of those who entered the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. And Peter directed his gaze at him with John and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention upon them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but I give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All right. Now, that's a dream. That's a vision fulfilled if there is one, right? Being able to go from being lame to leaping and praising God, right? That's definitely... So let me ask you to think about this. This is more than just a historical account of something that occurred to the disciples of Jesus where they performed a miracle of life. This is more than that because this is a message to you and I about something about a part of our own lives. You and I sometimes sit at the gate, that it's the, the beautiful gate, and, and that gate is meant to represent spiritual understanding within you and I. When you and I sit at the gate of spiritual understanding, when you and I are sitting there and this person happened to be lame, which means they weren't able to, to move in and, and walk right, right? And that's what this whole message, this series been about, is living right side up. It's how to live right in a way that, that expresses and offers us the opportunity to walk into that gate, praising and leaping, right? All right. So Peter and John, they represent that divine DNA within you and I. Peter represents our faith, and John represents the love. And when they say, look at us, they're calling us. There's this, here's, here's the man, what are the alms? They're asking for alms. You know, the, the, the lame man is basically begging. He's praying for something to happen. He's praying for that which he thinks he needs, right? And you and I do the same thing when things are going on in our lives, when we're not experiencing what we need to in order to, to have something of, of a greater good. We pray. We pray. We pray, really, every day, don't we? I know. I do, too. So our faith and our love says, look at us. It's, it's together. Our faith and our love together is what we need to be looking at. And Peter takes him by the right hand. Now, that's significant. The right hand is very significant. It has to do with our power. It has to do with our strength. It has to do with taking action into this world, right? Right? It, it's it's symbolic, living on the in, on the right way. It's symbolic of of being in that experience of living right. All right. So he fixed his attention. You and I have to focus our attention on our faith and our love, because those aspects of our divine DNA that those parts of us that are the aspect of God within us, our faith and our love, those are what will lift us up. They will raise us. 
to where we can see beyond the circumstances, to where we can see beyond the, the, this uh, circumstance that we might be in. There will come a time when we won't be living through the experiences of COVID. The pandemic will be over, but there will be other things in life. And so we have to be able to see beyond those other things as well, whatever they are. As a result of this, people will have financial difficulties. This could be years in the process of people coming out of this experience. By using our faith and our love combined, you and I are able to take ourselves from seeing only that which is in front of us. I don't have this, I don't have that, I can't this, I, whatever it is. I have a disease, or I have no way to get, I have nothing that I can do, I don't have a job, I don't have a friend, I don't have whatever it is, okay? And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and his ankles were made strong. This is symbolic. Our feet and our ankles represent our understanding and how we move in the world. And they were made strong, which meant his under, our, your understanding, my understanding from our faith and our love and applying it and holding on to it, letting it lift us beyond those circumstances. Those are the things that allow us to walk into that temple, into that beautiful gate where we are able to leap and praise God because we have achieved, we have gotten where we needed to be. Okay, now it's important to understand. He describes this man as lame from birth. So many times you and I get caught up in the ideas that we're being punished when bad things happen. Let me tell you, that is further from truth than anything you could hold. You and I are not being punished by COVID. We're not being punished by God for some excess. There are lots of people who want to believe that, but the reality is that you and I are loved with an unconditional love. God loves you more than you can possibly understand. So focus on your faith. Focus on your love. Focus on the goals and, 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 and how to achieve what it is to overcome your challenge. Focus on what it will take. And if you don't know what it will take, that's your goal. Learning. See the terrain? You don't know what it'll take to jump 50 feet to get up over an escarpment? Take some time to figure it out. You'll find out that you need a rope. You might need something you can throw up that 50 feet so you can climb. Remember, I was made to climb. You were made to climb this, whatever this is. You are made to climb. Letting go of our dreams, our hopes, we become that lame man sitting at the gate. But our faith and our love will always walk through and take us and lift us back up the very moment we turn and look at them. So it's not the time to berate yourself if you've forgotten for a moment your divine DNA. It's not the time to get down on yourself and say, okay, God is punishing me. This is the time to remember, God gave me this dream. I'm meant to have it now. What will I do if I could not fail? What would I do if I could not fail? And then act that way. So take this. This is where the rubber meets the road. You ever heard that, right? It takes persistence for you and I to focus on our goals and dreams. It takes persistence. Tom, Hawk, Tom Hopkins is a motivational speaker. He says, the number of times I succeed is in direct proportion to the number of times I can fail and keep on trying. And Winston Churchill said, success is going from failure to failure without a loss of enthusiasm. What is being said 
It's easy to get discouraged. It's not easy to move out of that. Be as consistent as you can with remembering. If you have something calling you, your heart, your dream, your desire, and it's always going to be something good that, that makes life better for you and for others as well. That's another aspect of something that God has placed within us. It always benefits yourself and others. Emily Dickinson wrote more than 1,800 poems. Less than a dozen of them got published in her lifetime. And it was more than four years before the rest of them that were published were published. But that didn't stop or discourage her from following her dream of being a poet. Having the acknowledgement wasn't the purpose. It was being the poet. David, being a musician, writing this music. That is a beautiful dream, and you are living it. I would offer that there is this a beautiful verse. It says, for freedom you have been set free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery from Galatians 5, 1. There are many things that will enslave us. Our own beliefs that we're not enough. The difficulties in life. The busyness that we can get caught up in. All of the day-to-day-to-day -to -day -to -day stuff. But make sure that some part of your day-to-day -day stuff is a focus on a goal for your dreams, your hopes, the things that Spirit is calling you to, and decide to take action. The lesson of the mountain is taking action on goals. And you and I, as we stay the course, as we, as we keep our focus on the terrain rather than just the mountaintop, and we expect those roadblocks, but we are persistent. We are persistent. We will achieve remarkable results because our faith and love, our faith and love, are going to raise us up. Jesus went to the mountaintop all the time to go apart. He was getting a new view. He was looking at things from a different perspective. And that's what happens with faith and love. We can look at our lives and things that are going on around us from that mountaintop perspective. And we can see what is needed. We can see the next step. We can see the terrain that's in front of us that needs to be climbed because you and I were made to climb. The desires of your heart were not put in your heart by accident. Follow them and let that knowledge settle into your bones that you are meant to have this. And then act as if you cannot fail. Without action, you and I can plan. We can wish. We can dream. We can hope. All we want. But it's like having a powered, a high-powered sports car sitting in the driveway waiting on a key. So join me. And our next lesson, the last of our six-week series about Turtle. Because I got to tell you, something's going to happen in Turtle's life. Right. Yes. As Turtle learns about the gift of friends. So I ask you and invite a friend to sit with you as we learn next. God bless you. He's really going to cross the road next week. <laughs> this is a song about the things that are beautiful, beautiful message. This is a song kind of about uh, holding on to the spirit and love and things. And it's called Holding on to the Spirit. This is one of your songs, 
this, right? Yes, it is. It's also on my last album. <laughs> Shameless plug. No, but a uh, proud plug. What was the name of your album? Aquarius Rising. Thank you. You can find it everywhere. Yeah. Online. Anywhere that you want to get music, all the usual places is out. Thank you for being with us today. 